The GPS iMod is a modular NPBI system field assembled to any length up to 240 inches in 6 inch increments. It is manufactured to prevent wear, does not require any replacement parts, does not generate ozone, and is designed for longevity in low cost of ownership. The iMod must be mounted downstream of any filtration. The primary location to mount the GPS iMod is between the particulate filter and the cooling coil. A pre-coil mount will provide coil cleaning. Alternatively, the GPS iMod may be mounted downstream of the particulate filters and coil in a dry location where condensation droplets will not contact or form on the emitters. Before you start the installation, confirm you have iMod 15 watt power supply, iMod power head with a flexible high voltage cable, six inch modular sections, end cap for each assembly bar, a minimum of two mounting magnets per bar, nylon screws and nuts for the front or back, and metal screws for the top of the iMod sections. You will also need self-tapping sheet metal screws, electrical wiring to provide power. There should be one iMod bar assembly on each coil up to 60 inches in height. If the coil height is greater than 60 inches, you will need to add an additional bar across the entire width of the coil. The iMod bar should extend over the entire width of the coil. The bar length should be no less than 6 inches and shorter than the finned width of the coil. Ensure both the high voltage AC unit and the installation location are grounded to maximize ion output. For installations in California healthcare facilities, consult the installation operation and maintenance manual for a screw type iMod install. For a snap type iMod install, assemble the modular sections by inserting the post into the receiver of the first modular section already attached to the power head. Ensure all ion emitters are properly aligned. Set the iMod on a hard, flat surface to assemble. Attach sections by carefully tapping with the rubber mallet so the sections snap together. Continue assembling the modular sections until you reach the desired length. After assembling eight sections, lay the assembly on the floor with the power head firmly against the wall and continue until the required length is reached. Once iMod sections are snapped together, they cannot be disassembled without being damaged. Once the last iMod section is added, push the nylon end cap into the receiver end of the last piece until it snaps into place. For a twist type iMod install, first remove the end cap from the power head. Save this end cap as it will be reinstalled on the final section. Attach sections by aligning the threads on the post end with the threads in the receiver of the power head. Twist the sections together until the emitters are properly aligned. Once the desired length is reached, twist the end cap onto the final section with a flathead screwdriver. Each end of the bar and every third section must be secured with a magnet or screw. When mounting, the bottom of the iMod should be level with the top of the fin surface area of the coil, with the carbon fiber brushes pointing toward the floor. Maintain a minimum of an eighth inch of clearance between carbon fiber brushes and any metallic or conductive surfaces, including wiring. Stay within a half inch of the coil finned surface. If the distance is greater than a half inch, ground the iMod bar. The power head may be rotated for routing. When more than one bar is required per coil, mount the second bar halfway down the coil with needles pointing toward the floor of the unit. Before wiring, confirm the voltage selector switch is in the correct position for power. Mount power supply on either an internal or external wall of the air handler within reach of the iMod's high voltage cable. Mount the power supply to the wall using sheet metal screws. Route high voltage cables to the power supply. Do not coil or bundle excess high voltage cable. They should not come in contact with low voltage control wiring. One high voltage port will be left open for attachment of the high voltage supply wire. Remove the plug from the desired port and fill the open port with the spare plug. Remove the plastic cap nut and first metal nut from the high voltage post. Remove the plastic cable retaining nut from the end of the high voltage cable and push the wire through the port. Place the plastic cable retaining nut back over the cable. Place all electrical eye connectors over the high voltage post. Replace metal nut and plastic cap nut and tighten to secure. 
Insert the high voltage connector into the high voltage port and tighten the plastic cable retaining nut. Connect control wiring if applicable and replace lid. Connect to a continuously powered circuit with the factory provided power cord. The power supply must be grounded using the green wire or grounding lug for all supply voltages. When utilizing an angle iron for the optional mounting location after the coil, make sure the angle iron is properly grounded. GPS recommends a ground wire from the power supply grounding terminal to the angle iron to ensure proper grounding reference. The iMod is equipped with an internal ionization output sensing circuit and can tie to the BMS-MAS for remote monitoring. Once the voltage selector has been set, all high voltage wires are connected and the iMods are mounted. Turn the power switch to the on position. The plasma on light will illuminate when internal or external sensors are detecting output. The internal BAS alarm contacts will close, proving system operation to the BMS. Place a standard non-contact voltage meter near the ion needles and prove there is ion output. Actual ion output values can be measured through handheld ion meters or a permanently mounted ion detector with BAS interface for 24-7 output monitoring. For proper commissioning, you will need a meter with a high voltage probe capable of reading up to 10,000 volts and an ion meter capable of reading 200 million ions per cc. Once the entire system is mounted and wired, place the on-off switch to the on position. The green power on LED and plasma on LED should illuminate. If an iDetectP sensor is installed, confirm it is on and operating. Connect a high voltage probe to a multimeter, connect the ground clamp, and measure the AC high voltage at the six inch modular stingers. Insert the tip of the high voltage probe into one of the emitters and confirm the voltage is greater than 4000 volts AC.